let's say you're a concept artist and you're doing some 3D and uh, you, you're, you're modelling your stuff out, you've blocked it all out, you've even done some lighting, in fact you've done some texturing and you hit render and yeah that's looking how you want it to look like and you're going to bring this into Photoshop. Let's say you're a visual effects artist and you've modelled this out for a, a matte painting and you bring it into Nuke or you bring it into After Effects. Now you've got this nice render and it's great to paint on and everything like that but uh, what if you want to isolate only certain parts of the image in Photoshop or After Effects or Nuke to say you want to colour correct only this kind of this part here. Now in Photoshop or After Effects or Nuke you could go in with selection tools and you could make very precise selections using say the polygonal lasso or um, freehand lasso even maybe or, or you could maybe use various other kind of selection techniques. Wouldn't it be nicer if not only did you get this what they call the beauty render but you also got a render for free, it didn't take any extra time to render, uh, that assigned a flat colour to every single object in your scene. Because then in After Effects or Photoshop or Nuke, you could just uh, use a colour selection, you could use a magic wand, you could use quick selection. I want to show you um, how to set up what we call a object ID mat pass or a puzzle mat pass. Um, they got tons of different names. All you really need to know is it's a pass that gives a flat colour to every single individual object, which means that you'll be able to make a selection in Photoshop a lot easier. Uh, we're going to be delving into parts of Maya that you haven't delved into before, I would assume anyway, unless uh, the people who, have, uh, who go racing ahead have done. Um, fair play if you have. Uh, the way you get this set up then uh, is you go to your render settings, just here. And normally, like uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about lighting, I think I briefly touched on what these things do here. These are general kind of quality kind of sliders. So if, the higher the number you have here, the less grainy your image will tend to look. But over, if we skip system and we go over to this thing here called AOVs, this is how we set up this object ID pass which is extremely useful, whether you're a concept artist or a visual effects person. Um, if you never mess around with an object ID pass, then you will forever remain an, an amateur. An amateur, sorry. Not, uh, you'll never be expert. Um, but thankfully, it's easy to set up. So you open the render settings, like this, and you go to the AOVs, which stands for, I think, Automatic Output Variables, which is pointlessly needlessly techy name for it will take your render and it will break it up into the constituent parts that make up the main render but also allow you to add lots of other stuff sort of uh, that hides within your render so you need to go to AOVs uh, you can forget everything and all you need to go is go down here add custom when you click add custom it says new AOV and you give it a name uh, you can call it anything you like but call it something that's going to make sense like object ID or something like that and go create and uh, why hasn't it appeared add custom object ID there it is yeah must have hit cancel instead so you now you've got this one called oh well on project ID doesn't really matter if you spell it wrong that's sitting here at the moment it's not doing anything it's completely empty so it won't, it'll start appearing when you hit uh, render, but there won't be actually anything in it because it doesn't know what to do with it at the moment. So we have to tell it what to do. Uh, this little button just here, this little downward eye, um, arrow, if you click that, you get a little bunch of options here. You just want the select AOV node. And in your attribute editor, you can see the settings. Again, we don't have to worry about much here other than this thing called default shader. Now, just as you apply a shader or, uh, or an image when you're doing substance, you do the same sort of thing here. You click the little checkerboard symbol. That brings up this create render node. Now, most of the time, um, when we're doing our substance stuff, we would have been using the uh, file input. But we don't want that now. We actually want an Arnold shader, an Arnold, a specific Arnold shader. So if you go to Arnold and you go into search shader and then surface, 
you want this one just here, this utility one. So you click that, and it loads that utility shader into the default shader of uh, the AOV node. See, now it's got AI utility too. So click into there, we can see it. We only need to change a few settings here. Uh, shade mode has to go to flat, and color mode goes all the way down the bottom and goes to object ID. Now this isn't actually that, my misspelling. This is its own um, built-in kind of setting. This utility node allows you to shade objects based on not necessarily whether, uh, what the light's doing. It allows you to shade objects based on even on, on bad UVs even. Uh, so just a, a general purpose utility kind of node. Um, most of the time, this is hardcore stuff for proper techno people, right? Um, when we want it, either as concept artists or starting out VFX artists, we're really only interested in the object ID. So you click that and it's done. So the next time you render in the Arnold render view, which I've got just down here, um, I'll just click render again. So it renders out this and you can see where it says beauty. Now when you click that, there'll be another thing down here, my object ID. And if you click the object ID, you get that. So now each one of those is a different color. So it's going to be a lot easier in Photoshop or After Effects or any kind of 2D package to go in and just click do a color selection on one of these things. And that way you can very, very easily isolate out, say, that part and do a color correction just on there. Or, you know, um, just the floor panels. You can select that and then, you know, add to selection, add these. So that object ID method is um, extremely useful. So I would encourage you to um, have a play with that. Weirdly enough, even though it looks all technical because you're going into the AOVs, at the moment it's probably got more use for concept artists than VFX people um, because concept artists want a really nice layer, hopefully, in their Photoshop files where they can just uh, you know, control, click, and get loads of masks, save masks out. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to show you because I want to provide um, the lion's share of today for you to continue working on your Mars base because it's week eight now. So then it's nine, ten, so two more weeks, then it's Easter holiday, and then it's just two weeks after that and it's done. So you kind of need as much time as possible. Having said that, what I would like you to do 